how you hey, doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm good. Hey, Senator, how's it going? One day at a time, buddy. How yeah. you doing? Good, good. Hey, um, boy, we kind of dragged uh, your, your colleague there for that two that two yeah. and a half. Yeah. And that you guys had a little visit this morning, right? <laughs> we did. We did. You know, it, it killed me to put cheese on tuna. It's like, I don't get it. I am so with you. I am not at all in favor of cheese with fish. No. I just, I, I don't, it's not for me. Let me just say, right. I'm not going to judge, but it's just not for me. <laughs> exactly. No, no judgment here. It's just, this is personal preferences. We all can, we're entitled to personal preferences. You know, exactly. Exactly. Um, I, I, I told the story how on, on Christmas Eve, being Italian-American, we make the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Yeah, and of course, right. It's a ton of fish, in it, but there also is a pasta course that kind of goes with one of the fish stews that I make. And I, um, my brother always wants to put cheese on it. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Right. So I go out of my way to make sure there is no Parmesan cheese in the house on Christmas Eve. So he started bringing his own. Um, but no, no I, kidding. I, no, no, he does. And so uh -huh. So what's, what's interesting, though, is I said, okay, fine. I told you I'll, I'll, I'll do, do a, a sort of a better version of a tuna melt, so I had to put cheese on it. So, But what I did is I used something a little more milder than, uh, than cheddar. I, I used a um, uh, taleggio. Uh, yeah, type. yeah. Uh -huh. so anyway, anyway. So um, you've been cooking a lot at home, huh? I've been cooking a lot. That's probably one of the silver linings of this pandemic for me in terms of the experience I'm having, although um, cooking – Every meal is not so much. <laughs> um, so I have figured out how to, one of the, 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 the ways to get through it all, I just make twice of whatever I make. And then either that's lunch the next day or I freeze it and that, you know, one day when don't feel like sure. cooking. And yeah. usually whatever I slow cook is something I'll then freeze half of it. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. yeah. The other thing I find is, is using leftovers, uh, you know, so the other day yeah. I had I made my, my boys love ribs. Um, so I, I made mm. some ribs and then we yeah. had rice because my, my little guy doesn't like to eat, but you know, if it's, if it's white food, he eats it. Um, <laughs> so I always try to have rice. And so the following day, I just took the, you know, some of the leftover pork off the ribs, mm -hmm. cubed it up really small. I made fried rice. I threw some scallions. Oh, crab. yes. Yeah, we've and been doing a lot of fried rice, actually. Yeah. Yes. yeah. With that yeah. same point. Um, and I do it actually with brown rice and it's great, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, we've been doing a lot of fried rice. It, yeah, it sure. I, yeah, I was never much of a, uh, you know, we don't, we don't. You don't we, do brown rice? No, no, I do brown rice. Yeah, but I, I never did. I never cooked a lot of rice. It was always one of these things. I never grew up eating rice. You know, I grew uh -huh. up eating pasta. And so yeah. um, lately, I've just, for some reason, been craving it. And uh, um, love so, rice. And you know what I've started doing recently is wild rice. I grew up, we almost every meal included rice. So I grew uh, up with rice. Sure. Um, but now I'm starting to also do wild rice, which I always thought was a little, you know, time intensive, but it's yeah. actually nice. It's a nice difference. It has a nice texture. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of uh, real earthiness. You, you yeah, kinda, that's right. Yeah. That's one of those foods. It's like beets to me and mushrooms. You actually taste the earth. You taste where it was you know, grown. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I love wild rice. And then just I, last night I roasted a chicken. Um, and usually I, I stuff the under the skin and let it sit in the fridge for a day or two with a lot of salt outside dry it up and then yeah. slow roast it that's i do you know right. like at 325 for right. two hours it sounds like you have some skills there oh well I, I like to eat. <laughs> my mother taught me and when i was a child she's like you like to eat good food you better learn how to cook <laughs> right 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 and how does that come in handy does that come in i imagine it comes in handy when you're when you're back in dc too it yeah. does. I mean, it's nice to have a home cooked meal. I mean, when we're in, in the normal routine, I don't have as much time to cook, but um, it is one of my joys. And we have a tradition at home of Sunday family dinner, which yeah. like the kids know they can bring anybody they want, whoever's in town, but I'll cook and I'll start cooking even maybe the night before. Um, friends come, my in-laws come, whoever is around, and that's my favorite thing all week is Sunday family yeah. dinner. Yeah. yeah, I grew up like that. We had what we called macaroni and gravy. Now, oh. Italian American, it's gravy though, and it's gravy when you have marinara sauce and when you fry meatballs and sausage and rajol and put it in the sauce, it becomes a gravy. Right. Pasta. We never called it pasta. We called it macaroni growing up. Oh, but that was the, the one meal that we had to be, well, we had to be home every night, but that was the one meal we had, yeah. we had that meal earlier in, in, the, in the evening, like late afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then in the summer, we would go crabbing and do something similar with crabs. And then you'd sit around the table and pick mm. crabs all night. Yeah. And that's the one thing that I saw, um, you know, with food really had the power of doing is bringing people around the table because that's especially right. if you can crab all night, then the conversation goes to plenty of family gossip, obviously, yeah. and yeah. politics and 
Uh, my father was involved in local politics a little bit, and so um, politics and sports and things like that. But you know, from an early age, I saw that it wasn't so much about what you're eating, but sort of bringing people around the table, which was really important. So, but, you know, I grew up the same way, and in fact, yeah. um, when we were growing up as kids at the table, we were encouraged to speak up, but there was no baby talk. Like you right. speak up, and then you'd have to defend your point. You know, and there were some of the most incredible conversations with a lot of passion that would take place around our dining table. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I remember reading stories about the Kennedy family, and one thing I found really interesting at the dinner table, they were assigned opposite ends of a debate. And even if they didn't believe in it, they still had debate. And yeah. it, it's, right. uh, and yeah. defend it. Right. Uh -huh. right. Uh -huh. right. Okay, so we're, listen, we're gonna, we're, I'm, I'm starting to get tired of eating my food. You, you said you're getting tired of it too. So we're gonna talk restaurants and getting restaurants. Okay, good. Okay. But I hear okay. you have a, a recipe that you wanna do. And I hear you have a, an onion hack that I have to see. <laughs> so okay. so the, the stove I is, have my onion here. The stove is yours. Go do you your thing. See? All right. It's really, it's just very basic. Okay. Can you see the onion? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you just get rid of the top, peel it. Okay. So that's obvious. Okay. Peel it. Hey, hey Senator, I'm, I'm, I'm reading the screen here and I got a lot of people saying Vice President Harris. That's, uh, that's, I see a lot of people right saying- Right now, I'm I'm, I'm not gonna put you on the spot, I'll let you do your onion, but I'm seeing it. <laughs> okay, so keep the end, right? Yeah. Take, cut off the top, peel it, yep. keep the end. Nice. All right, so you got a flat surface to work on, right? Yep, three quarters okay. of the way down, slice, slice, slice. Right. Right? Yep. Okay, so wait, I gotta go across because then another thing happens. Yep. Oh, I got you. I, I see what you're doing, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and so that and that and then the other way. Yep. And then I will show our friends just the easiest way to chop an onion. Okay, done. Got it, everybody? Yep. Now watch. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, what's cool about that, that's, that's, that's great. What's cool about that is, is so typically, you know, I, I, I'll cut the onion in half and then do the same thing, but it's actually safer what you're doing because I have to hold the onion down and cut sort of into my hand. Right. Not into my hand, but it, it's a little tricky. And, and But that's, I, I like that. That's good. Right. I know, I, and, it, and that's I, it. I know, and it's, and it's you're perfect. not chopping all day long. Awesome. Right? Yeah. So now I hear you're doing some Moroccan meatballs. Is that, is that right? I am. So I'm doing, that's for dinner. Um, you know, so in the pandemic, we try not to go to the grocery store too often, right. buy a bunch of stuff and freeze it. So frozen beef, ground beef that have been defrosting overnight. I'm going to chop up cilantro, some green onions, um, clove, coriander, cumin. I'll do some, um, I actually love fresh peppers in almost anything. Okay. So, I have some habanero peppers um, and I'll chop them up very fine because you know they're super hot. Right. And um, a little cinnamon, which I don't have out yet. And uh, hi, who's my, that? My, my son, that's my son, Luca. He's doing living. Hey, Luca. Hi, I'm Kamala. Yeah. Uh, I used to have hair like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Are you going to make something after No, no, no. I'm not making it. I'll make you lunch after this, but. <laughs> Can I have what you're making? Yes, sure, of course. <laughs> So th that's pretty, and then I'll, you know, soak the bread. I actually freeze bread, okay. um, like a loaf of bread, because it just extends the life of it. And then I always keep the ends of a loaf for sure. meatballs. Right. And so, but these meatballs, and then so soak the bread in some milk. Um, I'll probably um, add a little, and then a little chopped onion. But actually, I prefer in my meatballs to grate the onion. Okay. Um, just when I do Italian meatballs, I would love your recipe. But when I do Italian meatballs, I, I shred the onion because then it actually adds some moisture. Right? Okay. Um, but with this chopped onion, now that I have shown everyone my technique, I'm use I, I will probably use make onions. a sauce See, for the meatballs. <laughs> right. I have a. I cry immediately when, when onions are cut. I would be bawling right now. <laughs> oh, you have to get onion goggles. I got them for my husband. Oh, you have you seen onion goggles? No. no. Oh, they're fantastic, and they will work in a pandemic too. <laughs> just fantastic. They're green, and they're literally they have suction, so no air gets in. I, they're I'll, like I'll swimming check, goggles. I'll check these out. Yeah, they're Are great. You put a cutting board under the hood and turn the hood on, so the air gets sucked out because I cry immediately. 
You know, if you if you refrigerate the onion, yeah, it reduces it a little bit before sure. you cut it. Yeah. All right. So are are you are we are you finishing this recipe or, is, or are you? Gonna... Well, I mean, I'm just I'm I'm gonna start it. I, I'll start okay. chopping as we talk, but um, okay. I have to, honestly, okay. it's not, it didn't completely defrost <laughs> it. <laughs> awesome. Okay. It's like look. Like, see, like see, <laughs> polit see, politicians tell the truth. They can tell the truth. There it is. <laughs> I thought it would be defrosted, but now it's not. <laughs> All right. So listen. So let's just chat. Let's chat restaurants for a second. Okay. I, I know uh, you're from the San Francisco area. You guys love your restaurants there. Yes. Um, as you kind of mentioned that, you know, as much as you love to cook after a while, I'm getting tired of my food. I want to get out to restaurants. Right. I, yes. own, I own restaurants and we're struggling right now. I mean, I know. Um, I don't think that many of us, um, you know, two months ago realized how bad of a situation we were looking at. And um, uh, I, I'm a co-founder of the Independent Restaurant Coalition. And we've yeah. been fighting. Um, I'm sure you've had calls from our, our members and uh, people who are representing us. And, and um, yeah. Yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're a combination of scared um, uh, for our livelihoods, for our, our employees' livelihoods, um, for the livelihoods of all the farmers um, fishermen, uh, oyster farmers, cheesemakers, yeah. all those people that supply right. us, you know, right. without, without us, we're the end product. Without us, right. they're going to go out of business too. And so we're, uh, um, you know, PPP, I, I, you know, it's not helping that much. It, it yeah. helps if you're, if you're open and maybe you're depressed by 50%, yeah. but you yeah. know, it, it's, it doesn't help if, you know, and this is be clear, it was set up for to help employees and that, that was a, a great intention. But for me, I'm not going to open up for several months. And so if I got to take PPP now and hire my staff right. back, I'm going to lay right. them off. Now right. Because I just don't have jobs. So I, I, you know, I'm going to run out of money. Right. So, right. so changing the date of origin, I think, would be a great idea, especially mm -hmm. maybe moving it to uh, July 31st, where the, the, the $600 plus up from federal unemployment runs out. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would help. But, but we're asking for something because, you know, getting open is, is a part of the equation. The other part of the equation is staying open because we're looking at a good, you know, 12 to 18 months of, of economic downturn. I agree. And so, and this is no one's fault. And so, um, and so we're, we're looking for a stabilization package that's not only going to get us open, but it's going to get us through at least the next six, eight months. Mm -hmm. Because what we don't want to do is open, hire everybody back, and then two months realize that 30 that's right. Months, then that's seven right. of our business is gone and we can't get back. That's and right. That's gonna Everyone's going to get laid off again, and then those right. farmers are going to. So you know we're 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 right. struggling. Um, right. Uh, you know I'm 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 great. You know really grateful that, that people like you and, and other you know Senator uh, Warner and, and so many other people, um, people on the House side like Rose Delora, who is a good friend of mine. Oh, and, she's and, been terrific on this issue. Yeah, and, and yeah. Lowy yeah. and, and Jim McGovern, and yeah. I've done a lot of work with him around hunger, and so. Yeah. Um, so, you know, people are listening, you guys are listening. And, um, and even, even on the other side of the aisle, people are listening. And so the yeah. question is, what, yeah. what, what's going to happen? And so we're really, um, we're struggling with this, but we, we, we need some help. And, and you know, not, not because we're looking for a handout. We're looking to get open, do what we do, employ all those people. 11 million people we're talking about, the independent restaurants hire. Uh, that, uh, and so we're, those jobs, you know, some people, experts put it at 50% of the restaurants will not get through this. Yeah. That means seven, you know, five, five, five and a half million people will not have jobs, and that's going to last a long time. So, we we need some help, and I'm really grateful that that uh, um, uh, to have uh, members of Congress uh, and senators like yourself that uh, obviously care about workers, care about yeah. jobs, care about and care about restaurants, knowing that restaurants are really that conduit to sort of have stimulus really flow through because it goes to so 95, 95 percent, 95 cents of every dollar we take in goes out the door. So if you talk right. about stim, I mean, you keep us going, we'll stimulate the economy. But and to your point, and it's been my experience my entire life, and certainly my entire adult life, um, our small restaurant owners and businesses are not only a business, but they really are part of the the civic fabric of a community. Um, yeah. It is the restaurant, it's the small businesses and restaurants in particular who are always the first to say, hey, um, do, you need to feed folks um, who are hungry. We're going to be there. We will right. donate. Um, the first to, when we need to set up a food kitchen, that they are there. The first to hire locally. Um, I have a cousin who has a restaurant in Oakland, a chicken and waffle restaurant. 
And he started a full thing. He just started it. He didn't name it. He didn't get any fame or recognition for it, but a reentry initiative. And he hired a bunch of folks who were mm -hmm. formerly incarcerated and trained them and has people who have been working in his restaurant now for a decade who he, right. took, he took in and trained and invested in. And that's, that's the experience I have with, with so many. I mean, all of the, the, the small restaurants I know, and by small, I mean, just, you know, those who are, who are running day to day, but running an incredible business, but feeding a community in every way you can possibly feed. Exactly. You know, yeah. uh, Chef, Chef Jacques Penn has a foundation. He does exactly that. He takes yeah. uh, uh, in, in, you know, previously incarcerated people and trains right. them uh, in culinary arts. And, and uh, right. But yeah, but you're but you're absolutely right. I call I call chefs and restaurateurs like we're the first responders when it comes to actually emergency feeding. I mean, look at the work that Jose Andres is doing around the country. Yeah, um, but and what he's done is he's just you know got a, an army of chefs that, that that help out. But you're right when it comes to fundraising, when it comes to you know you know just kind of taking care of our communities. Yeah. And that's what restaurants are all about. And that's yeah. you know you bring up a really great point because when we're through this, when we figure out a, a, a cure, when we have that vaccine. Um, when people start going back out, um, we need those cultural institutions yeah. to make sure they're intact because that's where we're going to go to feel normal again. That's, that's right. where we're going to go to that's right. you know, start celebrating again. That's where we're going to go to have you know celebrate our birthdays or anniversaries. Um, you know, we're, we need that. We're, that's that's going to make us feel that we actually got through this, and so we need to keep that intact. All on all of those cultural uh, you know institutions, not just you know food, but you know, artists and, and, yeah. and musicians. I mean, F FDR, part of the New Deal, he, he, he had, you know, musicians going out to the park to play. You had murals painting amazing murals. Yeah, and so, right. you know, it's, it's important that, yes, we need to take care of our financial health, but we yeah. need to make sure that the things that make us uniquely American and make our country work, that those are all there and those are intact. Um, also, you know, I got to say, when we talk about saving restaurants, we're not talking about, we have some famous chef on TV restaurant. We're talking about the recent immigrant that came here. They came to this country with a dream. They pooled all their money. And mom and dad are working in that restaurant every night. The kids are working that's there. Right. Those are the restaurants that we that's need to right. save. You know, all those exactly. small little places. That's, that's, that's what this is about. It's, it's right. yeah, you know, a guy like me, I'll get by. I'll figure it out, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but we need to take care of people who are, are going to really struggle, you know, through this, especially you know, the restaurants like my friend Naomi Pomeroy has a restaurant in Portland where she's, she's 22 seats. <laughs> no, right. She's going to close. She's not going to get through this. And so, you know, we... But, we... And, and, but to your point also about just the, the part of that, it's part of what makes a community a community, of, right? Yeah. That, that we are all... It's, it's that neighborhood restaurant that when you go there, they're so used to it. It's like going to your mother's kitchen where they, the they sit you down and feed you what they know you like. It's, it's that neighborhood restaurant. There's, we have a couple that my husband and I go to, like if I'm campaigning after a long day and I might call and say, is your kitchen still open? Right. Come on in, Kamala. And you sit right. down and they just give you a beautiful bowl of pasta or something else. And it's literally right. like being in your mother's kitchen. It's, it's the song. It, you want to go You want to go where people know your name. Yeah. And it's exactly. But this is who yeah. our small restaurants. This is who these restaurants are. They're literally right. family and part of community for so many people, especially in neighborhood restaurants. To your point, with, you know, five, ten tables, they can seat 30 people. And it's a, it's a labor of love that they perform. Right. And... Um, and it would no, be a shame to lose them. It would be a shame. We can't lose them. It's part of what makes us rich as a community, right? right. In terms of the, mm -hmm. the fabric of a community. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. And it's also that first job for so many, you took so many people and they're like, oh yeah, when I was in college, I waited tables. That's how I got by. Or in between jobs, I waited tables. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, yeah, but we're gonna need, we're gonna need that. You're gonna need to walk into your place and see your favorite bartender, your favorite server. Right. Um, Right. And you're, you're going to, you know, need to throw your arms around them and, and know that they're safe and they're there. So, uh, well, one of the things to the point of this conversation, Tom, that we're also fighting for in the next package is it, it, it should the small businesses should not be treated like it, they should not be in the same tranche as publicly traded companies. A absolutely. Like, you know, that, like we got to We got to correct that. That's a real problem. Right. The Independent Restaurant Coalition, that's where we make our distinction. It can't be yeah. publicly traded restaurants and it can't right. be restaurants that have over 20 um, similar uh, uh, locations. Yeah, uh, 
right. Yeah, so we're we're trying to sort of figure that out. But also, listen, we we that that's great, but there's a whole lot of jobs out there. There's a whole lot of restaurants out there, small, medium sized restaurants. Um, you know, we just want to be there for you. We want to be there for for America. We want to you know continue to 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 grow and be that place to 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 you know welcome people. That's that's what we're looking to do. We want to be there on the other side of this to welcome you know America back to uh, their favorite place. You're great. You. What are you making for lunch? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> you no, know, I had I had tuna left over from uh, right. the, the <laughs> nine o'clock so, session. Um, I did too because so, yeah. I did my video with Mark at like five in the afternoon, and yeah. that wasn't going to be for dinner. So we had tuna sandwiches the next day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. That's what I think is going to be some, some tuna in it somewhere. Um, but I don't know. We'll figure out. We'll figure out what they, what they want to eat. But I, I know they're also. Um, I promised them a, a, a catch in the yard, so I got to get out and do that. Uh, oh, you know, good. So, yeah, that's cool. great. Anyway, listen, it, it was great seeing you, and thank, um, you. and thank you for everything you do. I'm sure we'll see. If you see your sister, tell her hi. Um, I will. I promise. Yeah, Maya, um, I spent some time with her uh, on the last presidential campaign. Yeah, uh, she's, she's awesome. I uh, will, and I will, I will tell her. Thank you. Yeah, cool. thank All right, thanks. Great. You, you be yeah. well, and thank you. For you, you too. Stay safe. I'll see you later. All right. Take Bye. care. Bye.